So it's important who owns the press, as we've just seen and heard, but it's also important who decides what is news. Why wasn't it news last weekend when more than 100,000 people turned out in 11 cities across the country to protest the occupation of Iraq? Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston, Orlando, Salt Lake City, New Orleans, Jonesboro, Tennessee. But if you blinked while watching the national news, you would have known it was a story. We found less than two minutes of scattered mentions on television. Here in Manhattan, thousands of people took to the streets in a steady rain. But the national coverage was even damper than the weather. The New York Times didn't run a story at all, and local television coverage was sparse. Forty years ago, opposition to war was a big story. You couldn't miss what happened that October day in 1967, when more than 50,000 protesters moved en masse from the Lincoln Memorial across the Potomac River to the Pentagon, calling on their government to end the war in Vietnam. This photograph by Bernie Boston of the Washington Star circled the globe to become one of the most enduring images of the era. But this one, too, speaks volumes. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara peering out of his window at thousands upon thousands of his fellow Americans who just wanted to stop the killing. Among them was 16-year-old Morris Isserman. He was a high school student making his first visit to the nation's capital. By the end of the day, he and other marchers would be tear-gassed and dragged away. 700 would be arrested. Isseman, 40 years later, is a historian teaching at Hamilton College. In the Chronicle of Higher Education last week, I came across his essay reminiscing on that day. Press reports, he reminds us, disparage the protesters, despite their solemn rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, which they sang wide open, high notes and all, and despite the Secretary of Defense above them breaking down and weeping. Hisserman reminds us that only five months before the Pentagon protest, McNamara, one of the war's architects and defenders, had sent the White House a confidential memo outlining his growing doubts about American involvement in Vietnam. The march on the Pentagon was a watershed, Morris Hisserman writes, turning dissent into resistance. Even so, the war went on for another seven years. Altogether, almost 60,000 American soldiers died and millions of Vietnamese. America still lost, fleeing the country and leaving Vietnam to the Vietnamese. In Iraq, the war also goes on. Despite the protests, despite public sentiment that has turned against it, despite almost 4,000 soldiers dead, another 28,000 wounded, and God knows how many Iraqi civilians killed or injured, and the war goes on. Look at this story in the Washington Post. It appeared last weekend as those marchers took to the streets. Reporter Joshua Partlow told of an American unit fighting in a southwest corner of Baghdad, a once middle-class neighborhood now in ruins. One officer told him, people are killed here every day and you don't hear about it. People are kidnapped here every day and you don't hear about it. The unit has lost 20 of their comrades during their 14 months at war. The soldiers, Partlow writes, are tired, bitter, and skeptical. One of them told the journalist, I don't think this place is worth another soldier's life. Our issues this Sunday. Here at home, if you were watching the Sunday talk shows, you wouldn't know anyone was paying attention to either the soldiers or the protesting. The talk was all about politics, fires, and Iran. And if anyone in high office was weeping over yet another war with no end in sight, we'll have to wait until they write their books to know it. The protest last weekend came almost exactly five years after Congress backed the president's rush to war. The joint resolution is passed. Now, five years later, the Capitol and the country alike seem once again to have their fingers in their ears. In Philadelphia, one puzzled protester looked around and wondered aloud why there's not more outrage. 
as the war machine rolls on.